Hey there, welcome back to Skill Morto. Uh, this is part one of my Tamiya CBR1000RRR build. Um, I'll be building this as part of a Japanese group build on ISM's Facebook page. I'll be using the fork upgrade set from Tamiya, which adds quite a bit of realism. It comes with some turn metal parts and a dice to the correct colour, so we don't have to mess about with mixing colours to get the right look. Um, in the background in the video now, I'm just going to quickly show what's in the box. Though for this video, we'll just be focusing on the engine. And I'll be kind of in and out just to give some insight on what it is I'm doing in each part. Instead of the colour schemes you're going to see in this little pamphlet here, um, we're not going to be going for any of those. We'll be going for the Repsol library. Um, we're going to use the decals from an old RC213V kit. Um, I've got some spare decals as when I was building the RC2, RC213V, I, um, I had to buy a new kit as I had some particularly hot paint which ruined some parts. We're going to be using Tamiya's extra thin cement to stick it all together. I like to test fit the parts first just to see how it goes together, uh, see if there's any fitment issues or if there's any bits that need sanding or further chopping. Um, then once you've done that, pull it apart, put some glue on, hold it together for a few seconds and it should hold well. You could also hold the parts you're trying to stick together um, and then just run a, a small bead of the extra thin along the seam and because it's so thin then capillary action will pull it into the seam and it'll bond just as well. As you can see, we had some 
fitment issues. Um, there was just a little bit of the of plastic left where it was stuck to the sprue. Um, so quickly just got out the ultimate sander. Um, brilliant bit of kit. Um, just quickly blast over the area where there's excess plastic and as you can see it just goes straight in and I'll use a bit of the extra thin then along the seams just to get it stuck. So here I've got the coil packs which sit on top of the spark plugs which create the spark. Um, I've just drilled in some small uh, 0.3mm holes just so if I do decide to later on in the build to go into a little more detail I can add the coil pack wires. So this part, uh, even if it was cut out of sprue, it had little bits of plastic left over. So what I normally do when there's bits left over uh, that the nippers just won't get is I will grab, uh, in this case, a flat Tamiya file and just fi gently file away the area, just making sure I'm not changing the profile. And then I'll come in with the Ultimate Modeling Product Sanders. Um, this one, I believe, is 240. And then this one is the buffing stick, which is absolutely brilliant. Uh, use the blue side first, then turn it over and use the white side. And it, the part just looks brand new uh, once you're done. So that leaves a nice smooth surface, so it looks as though it hasn't been touched. Next up, we're just mounting the parts for painting. Um, super simple, just using cocktail sticks. A lot of the parts will have holes where other things uh, other parts on the model connect to and it's just easy enough to just pop a cocktail stick in through those and that gives you something nice to hold on to and because the cocktail stick is pointy on the other end I've got a parts holder which is nothing fancy just a just a chunk of polystyrene which the cocktail sticks go into and then it's nice and easy to move all the parts at once and keep them off the bench so you don't get dust or hairs or anything in the paint once it's done. Some parts won't be as easy to mount to cocktail sticks because they're not going to have holes where they connect to other bits on the model. Like this pipe here, what I do is I get a cocktail stick with the end that's already snipped off pop a bit of CA glue on and just hold the part to the glue for a few seconds um, and the great thing is this part is not going to be seen once the once the model's built so if a little bit of CA glue is left then that's not a problem and next up now is priming uh, I like to use the ultimate modeling products primer um, it's great um, it dries really quick um, it's easy to get a nice finish and this gloss black is good enough to leave as a colour by itself on some parts. For my first layer I like to do a nice thin layer. Um, I'm not looking to kind of cover the whole part and, and make it all black. I just want kind of like a dusty coat um, and then I'll do that to all the parts that need priming. And then by the time I finish the last one, this primer is normally dry. If not, 
you can just blast it with air from the airbrush um, and you can actually watch it dry. Next we're going to start painting the engine components. Uh, I'm using Tamiya LP61 metallic grey here for the throttle bodies. Um, the paint is going to be thinned 50-50 uh, I normally start with and then add a little bit more thinner just to get a kind of smooth milky consistency to the paint. Um, I'm using the Ultimate Apex airbrush with a 0.35 needle. The lacquer paint actually goes through brilliant. Um, it's my favourite of the Tamiya paints, uh, be it lacquer, enamel uh, or acrylic. It leaves such a great finish and it dries really quick. I'm using the Tamiya lacquer thinner with retarder, which does slow the drying time down slightly. But still, it is quicker than acrylics, it's quicker than enamels and it leaves such a great finish. leftover paint will go back into the pot uh, that way next time I use it it's a little bit thinner and I have to use less thinner next up we're using the LP70 gloss aluminium this will be for the crankcases and the rocker cover just start doing the first layer very lightly um, and the same as with the primer uh, just build it up slowly until you get the desired colour you're looking for. The, as I said, the lacquer paint covers so well, um, I normally end up using two to three layers, depending on the size of the part. Next up we're going to be masking off the cylinders, uh, they need to be painted a different colour from the gloss aluminium on the crankcases and the cam cover. Um, there's a line going all the way around the cylinders where in real life they would meet the crankcases and there'd be a gasket. Um, we're going to follow this line with the 1mm masking tape. We're just going to grab a cocktail stick just to make sure the masking tape is stuck down nicely. Uh, I like using a cocktail stick rather than tweezers or something because it's wooden, it's softer, it's less likely to scratch the paint underneath. And you've got to kind of poke the tape into all the, the dips and the crevices just to make sure you get a nice clean demarcation between the two separate silver colours.
So I'm just slowly going round with a cocktail stick and burnishing it down, making sure it's all stuck um, and there's no gaps. Once we get all the way round with the one mil tape, we'll go on with the two mil tape and then four mil and so on and so on until the whole crankcase area is covered. Um, we want to make sure we cover everything uh, just to make sure there's no stray paint when you do come to paint in the cylinders. So we'll be using the acrylic uh, Tamiya X32 titanium silver. Um, this paint is not too different from the gloss aluminium used for the crankcases, but uh, it's still a slight difference, which you can't see much on camera, but in person you can see the, the difference in the silvers. And again, exactly the same method as with the gloss aluminium. Just build it up slowly, first layer nice and thin. Um, and keep going until you've got the kind of colour you're looking for. As you can see here, there's not too much of a difference, but there is different. Uh, there is a difference in the sheen you get from both silvers. Next up, Tamiya Rubber Black LP65. I'm just going to be using this for the hoses. Um, the LP65 is really, really nice. Uh, I use it for hoses and electrical connectors and wires. It makes a really nice rubber colour. Um, I'm using uh, a brush to apply this. Um, normally I put just a drop or two of thinner into the lid when I'm painting with a brush. That helps it kind of go on a lot smoother. But with the lacquer paint, it's so good uh, through the airbrush or with a brush. It leaves a nice uh, flat finish with no kind of brush strokes or any kind of clumpy bits. Next we're going in with the Tamiya panel line accent colour. Uh, this is a really, really thin enamel based kind of wash. Uh, it can be quite difficult to get in the UK, uh, but if you do look around, you can find it. Uh, I'm just going to go through all the kind of dips and recesses um, and just pop a bit of the wash in. Uh, it does run quite a bit. That's why I've got the cotton bud um, you can catch a lot of it with the cotton bud you just pop the cotton bud next to it and it will soak up into the cotton bud because it is so thin I'm just trying to go around um, with the wash and the cotton bud um, and while it's still wet try and pull away some of the excess wash it will dry a little a little lighter than it looks now and when it's dry you can still remove uh, any excess you could do that with a cotton bud and a bit of either enamel thinners or i like to use lighter fluid just because i've got that at hand next we're going to use a pilot silver paint pen um, I know a lot of people do like to use the Molotow chrome paint pens. It's just these pilot ones are much easier to come by. Um, I use it just to go around and catch the bolt heads on the parts. I know on a lot of newer bikes and cars, if the part is black, the bolts are going to be black. If the part's silver, the bolts are going to be silver. But I find that a bit boring and I just want to add a kind of visual, a bit more visual interest to the black parts because they're going to be the ones which are more on display once the fairings are on. It 
can take a little while to dry, um, which is why I'm so my fingers are so spidery around this part. I'm trying not to touch the the paint while it's drying and end up getting it absolutely everywhere. Um, if you do kind of get your finger on it, uh, it will wash up quite easily with some lighter fluid um, or enamel thinners. I do don't think it's enamel based, but the enamel wash which I like to do first, uh, if done afterwards, can kind of pull the paint up and make it run. Next, we're going to go in with the AK True Metal Steel. Um, with this, we're going to do pretty much the opposite of what we've done with the panel liner. The panel liner goes into all the crevices and the dips to add a sort of fake shadow or low light. And the steel True Metal will be dry brushed over the top to give a kind of to give the highlights. Um, easy to do, just pop a bit on an old brush and wipe 99% of it off on the paper and then just gently brush it over the raised bits on the parts just to catch the edges just to give them that little highlight. It can make parts look a lot more metallic. Um, you can go further with um, models you're trying to make look older and it can make it make the parts look worn but with these parts, we only go in very, very, very lightly just to give it a slightly metallic look. Now what I'm doing here is I've got some sticky back um, aluminium foil which is left over from an old super detail kit. Um, I'm just cutting a very very thin strip which I'm going to cut into even smaller strips and I'll use this as the Jubilee clips on the coolant pipes. You can use the Pilot pen used previously in the video, the chrome paint pen, but it is harder to get a nice smooth clean line going around the part. I prefer this method because it's easy to stick on. If it goes wrong, it's easy to pull off and you can just keep going. With one of these little little rectangles of foil I have here, this will last absolutely years using it for this purpose. Ok, 
Okay, and now we're on to final assembly of the parts we've painted. Um, I like to use super glue for final assembly just because um, it makes things stick a lot easier. You can use the extra thin cement or any kind of plastic cement, though the paint would need to be scraped away for the plastic to bond. Um, the CA glue um, is great because it will stick the paint surface to the paint surface. And as long as you're careful with the assembled uh, model or part, then it's not really going to fall apart and it'll stick quite well. You can see here that there were bits which I missed earlier when I was sanding. Luckily, they're not going to be seen, so I can just get a, um, a craft knife and just kind of scrape them away. And that part is where the, the glue will go and it's going to be hidden anyway. little clip you can kind of see the difference in colors between the cylinders and the crankcases. Um, the crankcases are the same color as the cam cover which I'm gluing on top right now um, and the cylinders have got a slightly different sheen which is great. As you can see I'm being very careful not to get any excess glue on my fingers um, just because I don't want a thumb full of glue uh, and then to grab the part and leave a nice lovely thumbprint on our beautiful finished painted surface so you can see me rubbing my fingers together every now and again and when they disappear I'm just wiping them in my jeans just to make sure there's no glue left on my fingers Again, we're just test fitting everything before we actually commit to gluing it on as we might end up with a problem like we did with the cam cover where I missed a bit earlier while sanding uh, there's super glue on there you go to put the part on it doesn't fit properly and it's stuck that's something we want to avoid so test fitting only takes a couple of seconds and it can save you headaches in the long run
So we're almost done now with the assembly of the engine. Uh, there are parts which I've left off because they're either going to need decals or extra detailing. Just like the coil packs we drilled earlier, I need to decide if I am going to go into that extra detail and if so, where I'm going to route the wires. I'm just now going around the engine looking for any bolt heads which I might have missed or which have rubbed off during assembly because the paint from the paint pen can take a little while to dry and if you just start assembling straight away it can rub off or it can just start looking a bit dull. So we are pretty much done now with assembly. Um, if you'd like to see some closer, more in-depth photos, um, you can check out the Instagram account which is linked at the beginning of the video at the end and in the description. But if you did like the video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. But in the meantime, have a great day and stay safe.